Hello, this is Steve from SDR Play, and today I'm delighted to introduce you to the newest member of the RSP family, the RSP DX. The first thing you'll notice when you get your RSP DX is that it's actually in a cardboard box. Up until now, we've always shipped the RSPs in clear plastic containers, but now for the first time we're trying some new packaging in the form of the cardboard box. At least it should stand out on the shelf at your favorite distributor. So, without further ado, let's pull it out of the box and take a look at it. And here it is, the new RSP DX. It comes in a metal case like its predecessor, the RSP2 Pro. And on the input side, it also has three input connections, also similar to the RSP2. But whereas the RSP2 also featured antenna A and B inputs, 50 ohm SMA connectors, on the RSP DX, the old green plug high Z input has now been replaced by a 50 ohm BNC connector. You may ask why that change was made. The answer was quite simple. Although the uh, high Z input was useful for connecting a long wire antenna directly, most people found that they picked up so much interference from the last few feet of the long wire going into the shack that instead they ran a feed line coax into the uh, shack and then they were using a ballon to do an impedance match from the 50 ohm cable into the 1k input impedance of the high z now we're using a bnc connector and the reason for bnc versus sma is the bnc connector seems to be uh, very popular amongst the various uh, magnetic loop antenna manufacturers either way you can use any of the three inputs antenna a and b are full range inputs now from one kilohertz all the way up to two gigahertz the antenna c input it's from 1 kilohertz up to 200 megahertz, uh, which is considerably higher than the 30 megahertz on the old RSP2. If we now turn around and look at the other side of the box, we see the familiar USB type B connector to connect to your PC, and also a reference clock in, which can be used with the GPS clock references. Uh, you may have noticed that the reference out is no longer there, uh, for the simple reason that uh, it seemed like hardly anyone was using that feature. Some people like the improved accuracy of using a, GSP, a GPS clock reference on the input and if indeed you did need to drive more than one device you can provide an external T network to connect the same clock into, into multiple RSPs. So that's how the device looks. Let's plug it in and see how it works.
Now that we've seen the RSPDX in action, let's review some of the key features of the product. It covers all frequencies from 1 kHz all the way up to 2 GHz with no gaps, and within that range you can receive, monitor and record up to 10 MHz of spectrum at a time. So in that respect it's somewhat similar to other members of the RSP family. One thing that has been changed though is that performance below 2 MHz has been substantially enhanced in terms of improved dynamic range and selectivity. More on that in a moment. The DX also features a software selectable choice of three antenna ports, somewhat similar to the RSP2 and the RSP Duo. It has an enhanced ability to cope with extremely strong signals and an excellent dynamic range for challenging reception conditions. This will be of particular interest to people that live in areas where there are a lot of strong broadcast stations present. It features an external clock input for synchronization or connection to a GPS reference for extra frequency accuracy beyond what's achievable with the calibrated TCXO. And of course it works with our free Windows-based SDR UNO software which provides an ever-increasing feature set for all members of the RSP family and I should note at this point that SDR UNO will be coming to multi-platforms, it's on our roadmap already. And one other feature of SDR UNO which the RSPDX can also exploit is the ability to make calibrated S meter, RF power and signal to noise ratio measurements which can be exported to a CSV file. But perhaps the best way to understand what the RSPDX brings to the party is to compare it to the RSP2. The RSPDX features two SMA inputs, as did the RSP2, but the RSPDX extends the coverage range over the full 1 kHz to 2 GHz range. The RSPDX also features a BNC input, which replaces the high Z input that was on the RSP2 and also increases the range from 1 kHz to 200 MHz. Some of you may have noticed when connecting multiple sources to an RSP2 there could sometimes be some crosstalk between one input and the other. This has been significantly improved in the RSPDX. One thing of interest for all users will be the additional improved pre-select filters which offers improved intermodulation performance along with a user selectable DAB notch filter. Talking of notch filters, the AMFM broadcast and the DAB notch filters now work on all inputs on the RSPDX. And then we have the high dynamic range mode mentioned previously. What this means is for operation below 2 MHz, using the frame bands that are selectable in SDR UNO, you will see improved dynamic range and selectivity. Note, you probably will not see any difference in the noise floor when using HDR because that is function primarily of your antenna system. But what it will do is it will offer you much less spurious products coming down from the broadcast band and will probably allow you to pick up stations or beacons for example uh, much easier than you could with the RSP2. And then finally the RSPDX comes only in a metal case, somewhat similar to the RSP2 Pro. So now we can see how the RSPDX fits within the RSP family. We start with the RSP1A, which is a single tuner, single input device. When we step up to the RSPDX, it's still single tuner, but it now offers you three inputs that you can select, a clock reference in, and the HDR mode we were just discussing. And then if we step up still further, we come to the RSP Duo. This offers two independent tuners, which allows you to tune two widely different frequencies at the same time, and also allows you to exploit diversity tuning for improved signal reception or rejection of interfering signals. And perhaps not coincidentally, price-wise the RSP DX occupies the same price point as the RSP2 Pro midway between the RSP1A and the RSP Duo. 
This has just been a short introduction to the RSPDX. You will be able to find additional videos covering the technical aspects of the RSPDX in more detail and also how to use the software to gain the most performance out of your RSPDX. This along with many other videos is available from our website at www.sdrplay.com. As always, thank you for watching. 73.